Hey everybody, Fabrizio Cross here. I've taken the Electrum a little ways up the Mount Washington Access Road here on Vancouver Island in British Columbia because I wanted to film something a little different for you. I wanted to show you how the regenerative braking function works on the Electrum. There's a couple of interesting things that happen with the Electrum. We have two motors in the hubs. The back hub motor is a direct drive hub motor which supports regenerative braking. The front hub motor is a smaller geared hub motor which has a freewheel in it so it does not support regenerative braking. Um, however, the back hub motor uh, combined with the cycle analyst and the Grin phase runner controller is able to do a tremendous amount of regenerative braking. Part of the reason for that is I'm running a very big battery pack in the Electrum. We have 40 amp hours at 72 volts for over 3 kilowatts of battery capacity which means we have a lot of room for regenerative braking. It's got somewhere to go into the battery. The phase runner controller supports regenerative braking very well. Uh, I've found that I can draw upwards of uh, 2 kilowatts or 2,000 watts of power out of the back wheel cramming it back into the batteries. So one of the interesting functions of regenerative braking on the Electrum is that once the vehicle speed is over a certain kilometers per hour it's going to regeneratively brake whether you're asking it to or not and this is a function of the back EMF in the motor exceeding, exceeding the battery voltage. On the Electron this happens at a little bit over 60 kilometers per hour uh, depending on how charged your battery is. On a fully charged battery you'll be going a little bit faster before that automatic regenerative braking kicks in. Now you might think this automatic regenerative braking function was a disadvantage, but I for one think it's actually quite a good thing. The main reason is that because you're pedaling the Electrum all the time and it's designed for exercise, you can't wear heavy protective motorcycle style clothing that you should wear if you're going really, really fast on a two-wheel vehicle. As you can see today, it's a hot day, I'm wearing shorts, I will put my helmet back on of course, but I'm not wearing elbow pads and arm pads and a spine protector and full face helmet and all the things that if you were regularly going over 50 kilometers per hour on a two wheel vehicle, you ought to be wearing. So this is a very steep downhill and we'll see in the test run that I'm going to exceed the automatic regenerative braking speed and we'll start to have regen whether I ask for it or not. But as I said, I think this is a good thing because this will prevent me from going ridiculous scary fast. Now don't get me wrong, I'll be going 65 to 70 kilometers per hour because this is a really steep downhill and it would really, really hurt to fall off your bike in shorts and a t-shirt at 60 or 70 kilometers per hour. But not as much as it would hurt if you fell off your bike at 100 kilometers per hour, which is probably how fast I would end up going on this kind of downhill if I didn't have the automatic regenerative braking. So in a way, it's a drawback and a feature, and it protects us from our worst instincts, which is just to go too fast. Let's check it out. Okay, now before I start my downhill run, let's have a look at the Cycle Analyst V3 display so we can understand what's going on when I make my run. These numbers here, these are the kilowatts. This is telling me how, many, how much power I'm drawing out of the battery in kilowatts or if regenerative braking is going on, how much power is going back into the battery in kilowatts. This set of numbers here goes flashes back and forth between my battery voltage and the amp hours that I've drawn out of the battery. So this is giving me kind of a combination fuel gauge and state of battery. Over here we have a number of different pieces of information that scroll through. So here's the kilometers that I've covered so far. This is the motor temperature. And then another important number is down here. This is our kilometers per hour. And this doesn't scroll back and forth because you always need to know how fast you're going. So of course right now the bike's at a standstill. We're going zero. You'll see on this downhill run I expect to hit speeds in excess of 65 kilometers per hour. Uh, because the battery voltage is already drawn down to 74 volts. Battery fully charged would be sitting at about 84 volts. So we will see automatic regenerative braking kick in fairly early. I expect it about 60 to 65 kilometers per hour. All right, let's start the run. Okay, we're rolling out, and I've got the throttle on full, so we're drawing quite a lot of power. 
as we come up to about 66 kilometers per hour, it'll switch over and instead of drawing power, we're now putting power back into the battery. This is that automatic regenerative braking function I was talking about. And you can see here in the high 80s, we're actually generating quite a lot of power, about 1.4 kilowatts. As I approached a corner, I applied the brake, and you can see the brake symbol in the lower left-hand corner of the Cycle Analyst V3. And at that point, we produce a huge amount of power, up to 3 kilowatts at the speed I was going. And thanks to the Electrom's generator chain drive, on this whole run I've been pedaling and producing 150 watts to be stored into the battery for later use. Wow, okay, so that was way faster than I anticipated. I didn't realize how steep this hill is. I topped out at 88 kilometers per hour, which I have to say is scary fast. Um, I'm sure with practice, I could get used to going 88 kilometers per hour on the Electrum. It handled it really well, it felt great, um, but I really don't think that's a rational thing to do in shorts and a t-shirt on a two-wheel vehicle. If you're gonna be going that kind of speed all the time, you better think about some motorcycle protection. Uh, one of the things I want to bring to your attention that's kind of interesting is you can see how steep this hill is. We'll wait and see if a car goes by. There's an almost constant smell of scorched brake pads in the air on this stretch of road. And here's somebody coming down. Brake lights and... Oh, yes. That certain je ne sais quoi of a hot hot brake drum. Hey, I want to talk a little bit more about that smell of burning brake pads because it does point out one of the biggest advantages of a direct drive hub motor e-bike is that you have regenerative braking and therefore you're not using your brake pads on those steep downhills. And this is something actually that you really need to consider when you're buying a bike and what you're going to use it for. I love the mid-drive electric mountain bikes. I think they work great and they remove the unsuspended weight but you have to be aware that you're not going to have regenerative braking. You can't have it, in fact, because there's a freewheel between the motor and the wheel. Uh, so this is one of those trade-offs. On the Electrum, actually, we're running two motors. We're running a geared hub motor in the front, which helps with hill climbing and low-speed acceleration, but shuts down once the vehicle's over a certain speed in order to conserve power. And in the back, we have that direct drive hub motor that supports regenerative braking. And I think it really illustrates when you're coming down a hill as steep as Mount Washington and topping out at 88 kilometers per hour, it's kind of nice to have an additional braking function in addition to just your bicycle disc brakes.